Jolly Toe. In the time since our last Labor Day festival, the world for now has certainly become a much different place, as you can see. To keep everyone as safe as possible during the COVID-19 pandemic, a gathering this year is simply not an option. But the Choctaw people are no stranger to adversity. We have persevered through difficult times before because our faith, family, and culture ground us. And I am so proud to see how our generosity and courage are also carrying us through this difficult time. While we are not physically together this year, we are certainly connected in spirit. I call that the Chata spirit. And in that spirit, I am honored to present to you the progress of our Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. In 1831, the Chata people gathered what possessions they could carry and began a forced journey of almost 600 miles on the Trail of Tears. Those who survived had an unbreakable spirit. They arrived in an unfamiliar place, in an unforgiving land. But what the people saw was a land of hope, a land of abundance, life, and strength. A land that reflected the Chata spirit. What they brought with them was their family and tribal traditions, their stories, their culture. We have always been a resilient people. That resilience flourishes in us in this day. This is our story. This is our home. This is our tribe. Holly too. When I first took the oath of office in 2014, I said, as long as we stand together united, there is nothing that will hold us back. Six years later, I still believe that. Our ancestors knew how important it was to stick together, and that's what helped them survive the Trail of Tears and prosper here in our new home. There's no doubt this year has been challenging. We've seen our sovereignty attack by the governor over our gaming rights. We've mourned the loss of our family and friends due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But every time we're faced with a difficult situation, we've come together to do what's right for Choctaws and our communities. I am so proud of the relationship we built and continued over this past year. Choctaw Nation Associates donated over 18,000 units of blood for the Oklahoma Blood Institute, potentially saving tens of thousands of lives right here in southeastern Oklahoma. Our emergency management team traveled all over the ten and a half counties to help local communities with storm recovery, search and rescue missions, and emergency preparedness. And we've worked with city officials all over the Choctaw Nation to strengthen infrastructure and small businesses. In March, uh, when the COVID had hit around the spring break time, uh, we had got some calls uh, through the schools and through the community. The essential items, as in uh, the toilet paper, the paper towels, and uh, hand sanitizers were hard to get. So with the COVID kits, uh, we came together and we formed another team and uh, made these items available for the tribal members that tested positive. When the pandemic hit, you know, there were talk of places shutting down. Too many of our tribal members depend on this program for, as, as their primary source of food. We had to shop for the clients themselves, and uh, it was, you know, pretty difficult with, with the limited staff. So there were numbers of those people that volunteered, not just in Durant, but across all of our locations to help us during our peak times. Walmart approached some of the tribes in Oklahoma, and our, we were one of them, that they had some produce they'd like to donate. We had everything come in from Walmart to our Durant Casino. Heidi Grant and her staff there 
help to receive it into there and store it until we could get it dispensed to all the other locations across the ten and a half counties where we were going to dispense it. And it, was, it was quite a success and it was a lot of produce to give out. We knew that there was going to be a huge demand on our grocers, there was going to be a huge demand on our uh, travel plazas uh, to keep some of the basic necessities out there and so that was what we wanted to get our team working on. We had over 700 associates come forward over those months and, and volunteer their time in order to help do things like uh, prepare mail, go through and prepare uh, shipping out of prescriptions for our travel members and for associates. Uh, they went through and helped uh, stock our, our uh, country markets and our, uh, helped clean and disinfect our uh, retail travel plazas. And that was one of the most um, heartwarming things about all of this is that when the call was put out, they came together and they answered that. The participants that receive these meals are homebound. They can't cook for themselves anymore. With this pandemic, the Choctaw Nation has stepped up they saved the lives of those seniors that needed a meal. We couldn't have made it without them. The Choctaw Nation is a big second chance for me. As I grew up, I didn't have that, that stability I needed at home. Getting involved with a lot of gang situations. I was arrested in Sherman, Texas, and I wound up fleeing over here to Durant. I was on the run for about three years. They had a warrant out of Grayson County for my arrest for fugitive of justice. I was looking at five-year state. The very day that I was picked up from jail was the day that I realized my life was not where I need to be. And I knew the only person that could pull me through that would be God. The day that I did come over, to Choctaw Nation, I prayed about it again. If this is where you want me to be, I'm working for you. I'm not working for me. Uh, I worked as a sorter. Within three to four months, I promoted up to a driver. Worked my way through the levels and then opened and come up for the coordinator position. And uh, here I am. I don't take this job or where I'm at as a prideful, boastful, situation. I'm very humbled to be where I'm at in this facility and with the nation. That one person that you give that chance to will surprise you. And, and that's the way I feel. I was given that second chance. Don't let your past tell you you can't, because you can't. When the Choctaw people left the Mississippi homelands, they had to learn to survive in unfamiliar territory. Our ancestors adapted to their new lives by being responsible with the resources available to them. They became fierce protectors of the land and water and all the lives that depend upon those things. Today, the Choctaw Nation continues that tradition by working to make sure the land and water resources that sustained our ancestors continue to be there for future generations by applying for grants and funding projects that will protect our natural resources. Here we have squash in this uh, roll. Okay, this roll is gonna be okra. These plants here are eggplants. They still got a little ways to go. We're trying to do a backyard initiative that way. We try to mimic what you can do here in your own personal garden at home and take that knowledge we give you here and take it back home with you. Uh, the Choctaw Community Gardens, we've been doing these for probably about three years now. We believe it's important traditionally to try to keep our culture going and our heritage to know where we come from and to work with your hands and provide that and never let it get lost. We oversee all water resources within our tribal boundaries. So specifically, uh, we just got we got a, a project going on right now that is focusing on disinfectant byproducts. So those are carcinogenic byproducts pertaining to our drinking water from when we chlorinate it. So we're making sure that we give these facilities the best opportunity possible to find a, a technology to limit those potential carcinogenic compounds in their water. We're responsible for water resource management in general, and that includes water quality, quantity, 
watershed management in these regions. We're here to protect uh, our natural resources, conserve them, and sustainably utilize them for future generations. We're also making responsible financial decisions. We have become less dependent on federal dollars. Most of the money the tribe takes in is returned to the Choctaw people through programs and services like healthcare, education, and housing. Education has always been very important to the Choctaw people. In fact, the Choctaws built the first schools in Indian Territory. Sadly, there's a noticeable achievement gap between Native American students and their counterparts. Because we understand how important it is to get a good education and we want to narrow that achievement gap, we have developed several successful programs to support our students' educational goals. The TAG program stands for Tigers Achieving Greatness and it is a program that we provide college and career readiness to 7th through 12th graders at Tallahanna High School. We have three main goals is to increase academic performance, increase college and career readiness, and an overall performance of our native students in rural school districts. I first want to do the TAG program because of course I needed something to help with career readiness, college, all that good stuff. Because honestly, I didn't know where to start. This program has grown tremendously. Uh, there's a need in public schools for this type of program. Uh, students are graduating from high school not knowing what they want to do. Uh, the key to this program is exposure and that's exactly what TAG does. We expose these students to college and career readiness opportunities. We get them prepared for the next level. POSSE stands for Partnership of Summer School Education and through this program we partner with the uh, public school districts within the Choctaw Nation to offer a summer learning program for kindergarten through third grade students. Building a firm foundation in elementary is, is so important for students who are you know, advancing their skills from learning to read and once they move into the grades of reading to learn. Um, it's so important to start early, you know, building that foundation for them and just to help them be you know, successful throughout school and you know, as they advance into a career. The Posse program offers so very much to so many of our teachers, our community, our students, and it allows us to reach them academically, emotionally. It just opens up a whole new realm of every single thing that's available to those students in a totally different atmosphere. And we would not be able to do even a fraction of what we are able to do without Posse. Grew up on welfare and Indian commodities. By the time I was a senior in high school and 17, I was pregnant, did not have a support system. So talking about aspirations, looking back, I really didn't have any. It's kind of hard to say, but that's the reality. What changed for me at the age of 21, I had a friend from high school. I wrote to him about how horrible life was. His response was to me yes, you have a bad life and it will continue to be bad until you change. I packed up my two kids, packed everything I owned into a little car and drove 900 miles. I got enrolled and I knew life was going to be different. Went into education and became a school teacher and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Things change, you know, there by the grace of God, things change and my life changed. I've had a background of adversity. You know, there have just been different challenges along the way. And just pulling on that warrior strength, you just pull on that strength and say, I've overcome other things, I can overcome this too. Landing at ECU solidified it for me. I am going to make sure people like me who come from modest means, first generation, I'm going to make sure they understand higher ed, how to navigate the bureaucracy, that they can be successful. Choctaw sovereignty is having the ability to choose what is best for our people and our resources. 
That's why we've worked so hard to protect our gaming compacts as well as our hunting and fishing compacts with the state. Thanks to the hard work of our tribal council, the Choctaw Nation also made huge strides toward our housing goals this year. We built almost 300 LEAP homes and over 200 independent elderly housing units. We also saw great success in our affordable rental program. The LEAP program helps the tribal members by um, giving them that chance to own a property um, to where they wouldn't be able to own a home any other way. It offers a low rent that stays the same. It does not fluctuate. And at the end of the 15 year cycle, and our goal is to have that tenant or homeowner credit and budget ready to roll that um, LEAP property over um, into a mortgage and uh, successfully own that LEAP house. I'm probably saving anywhere from five to $700 a month doing the lease uh, to own program through LEAP. I've flourished in this home. We received a goal from uh, the chief of building uh, 500 LEAP homes in five years. Uh, right now we're currently sitting at 270 units complete with uh, 50 under construction at this time. We have this like little community, like we all basically work together and we're all friends and you know, we're just close knit. I'm really grateful for the tribe and everything that they've offered for my family. Another way we exercise our sovereignty is through our judicial system. Our tribal courts work closely together to make sure Choctaw tribal members are treated with respect and their voices are heard. In February of this year, I was appointed to the Eastern District of Oklahoma. I am a special assistant United States Attorney for the Choctaw Nation. That allows me to participate in the prosecution of any federal crime that uh, occurs on Choctaw Nation land. With the establishment of a prosecutor's office and an appointment as a special assistant United States Attorney, uh, we are working to legitimize and give more uh, credence to our Choctaw Nation judicial system. The ruling with McGirt is going to affect tribal courts in that some offenses that were previously state court offenses are now going to be the exclusive jurisdiction of either the tribal or federal courts. Our Choctaw Nation judicial system, our courts are prepared to handle an influx of cases and that we will be able to provide the same type of attention and detail uh, that the state and federal courts do. We are working to establish that we are a legitimate court and that we can handle uh, any type of case that comes before us. In July, we had our first jury trial. This was our first jury trial since the establishment of the Court of General Jurisdiction, which replaced the CFR uh, Court of Indian Offenses. It was also the first trial where the tribe exercised its enhanced sentencing power under the Tribal Law and Order Act. I think what um, we can do now and what we look forward to is continuing that practice in our modern court system. This trial shows that both the, the prosecution's office and the Choctaw Nation District Court are ready to handle any offenses that we may have under McGirt. Making sure our culture, language, and traditions are preserved and shared is crucial to the survival of our tribe. The first Monday of each month, we hold Heritage Day at headquarters where we highlight our culture through food, fellowship and faith. We are also working hard to increase the number of Choctaw language speakers through our Anompa Ayakana School. Using the resources and cultural keepers we have within the tribe, the Choctaw Nation has built a state-of-the-art cultural center in Durant to highlight our Choctaw history, tradition, and ways of life. I can't wait for everyone to see it. It will truly be an amazing experience. The Choctaw Cultural Center is a significant investment by the Choctaw Nation into its history, its culture, and community. When you come into the Choctaw Cultural Center, I think you'll be surprised because not only will you see amazing exhibitions that cover 
the Choctaw history. Um, there's also a changing exhibition gallery. The Cultural Center will also house Choctaw objects, artifacts. We have a living village um, that's connected to the Cultural Center. It has um, places for demonstrations, and we have an auditorium and theater so that we can host presentations and performances. We really hope the Choctaw Cultural Center becomes a treasured place for everyone to learn, to visit, and to grow. I make weird stuff that comes to my mind I think is cool, and if other people like it, that just gets me super excited. My parents didn't have the money to buy a lot of the toys that I wanted to have. So I wound up making a lot of those toys. Little models out of either like popsicle sticks and cardboard, just anything I could find that cheap. And just be real creative with, with what I had. When I got into my teenage years, I got into drugs and alcohol really heavy. There were so many times when I was going through it, arguing with myself and getting mad, yell and scream because I wanted it so bad, but I hated who I was when I did it. You look back and 20 years have passed and I've been inebriated, you know, almost all of it. I was able to, to actually stop drinking. As the first year of sobriety went on, in my dream, I kept seeing this image of this winged serpent. So I decided to draw it. It, it unlocked something within me that I had suppressed. I just started getting this creative flow again, I guess. I was sketching more, I was drawing more, I was painting. Anything I can do to help break stereotypes, share some understanding of, of the, you know, that there's, there's more out there to our culture. I feel like I've accomplished something. If it's artwork, if it's sobriety, whatever it is, go for it. Because uh, life is too short to never taking a chance at doing something new and creating. Just like our ancestors, over a century ago, we found ourselves in unfamiliar territory once again. The COVID-19 pandemic has spurred us to create new and innovative ways to meet the needs of our people. Throughout the global pandemic, I'm proud to say that we experienced no gaps in services to our tribal members. The Choctaw Nation was able to continue operations without laying off or furloughing associates. I'm also proud to say that our workforce continues to grow despite the current economic downturn. Our recruiting and workforce development teams are putting people to work every day in the Choctaw Nation. And with the casino expansion coming soon, we'll open even more positions. Small businesses are the lifeblood of our communities. Although the entire country is struggling with the recession right now, Small business owners all over the Choctaw Nation are showing that resilient Tushka spirit. When we were opening this, I had told Mickey, I said, you know, I want this to be like the store that I grew up, that I remember, you know, that uh, people, you know, whenever they grow up, they can tell their kids, hey, we used to go to that store down there and get, get a soda and a chocolate, you know, we kind of wanted to have that, that kind of mercantile uh, feel that just that old feel of the, back in the day. He's the brains of the operation and I kind of come up with some of the ideas and he makes that happen. We're known for our graphic tees. I mean, I can't even tell you how many of those t-shirts we sell on a daily basis. It's, it's pretty wild. We have a thing that we do called tea funding where we help um, raise money for people that are, you know, either going through a rough time or they just have a cause that they're trying to raise money for. Feels great to be top top near of the year. I just know that the Choctaw Nation is there for me, and um, I'm just proud to be Choctaw, and I'm just proud of what they do in our community. Proud to have our business on Choctaw Avenue. You know, I'm just thankful that we have the opportunities that we have and the training available to help us out in this business. I am Choctaw. I'm a proud Choctaw and Mississippi Choctaw. Business has been excellent. It has really grown over the two years that we have been in business and word of mouth has been a really big plus for us. 
Uh, we've got customers coming all the way from Dallas to get our food. It's very important to be able to offer our traditional foods to the public. We offer bison burgers, we offer Indian tacos, res dogs, fire dogs, tanchi la bona, grape dumplings, banaha. With the pandemic that has happened, uh, after hearing some of the stories of people not having enough money to feed their families or losing their homes, losing, losing everything, uh, there's a lot more homeless people out there and we wanted to contribute what we could. We decided we would partner with uh, Ministries in Action to help donate foods, uh, dinners to homeless. We are happy to serve whenever we can to whoever we can. And we believe that if you do good, good will come back to you. In last year's State of the Nation Address, I said the strength of our nation is measured by the strength of our people. We faced some difficult challenges this year, but each time we faced a tough situation, we've shown that our Chata spirit is even tougher. Our resilience comes from generations of Choctaws before us who persevered in the face of so many obstacles. I'd like to close with a line from one of my favorite poems. We are clay people. We are a people of miracles. Yako Ki and God bless. I am. I am. I am compassionate. Compassionate. I am compassionate. I am. I am. I am resourceful. I am resourceful. I am. I am. I am determined. Determined. I am. I am. I am. I am resilient. Resilient. I am resilient. We. 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 We, 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 we are Choctaw. 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 We are Choctaw.